In this video, I'm going to talk about why I think you should stay away from fine tuning models by OpenAI. Instead, I think you should focus on prompt engineering. And if you're a developer, focus on using all the new tools coming out with the ChatGPT API. And I'm going to go through some of those new tools in a moment. First, let me explain why I think you should stay away from fine tuning models. If you go to OpenAI's website, they pitch fine tuning models like they're really great and awesome. They let you get more out of the models. You can have higher quality results than prompt design, ability to train on more examples than can fit in a prompt, and so on. So that sounds great, doesn't it? At first, I thought this would be a way to teach ChatGP a lot of new information that it doesn't know, since it's stuck in the year 2021. But after going through the process myself of creating a fine-tuned GPT model and then testing it out in the OpenAI playground, I have personally found fine-tuned models to be worthless. If you'd like to see what I mean, look up every video you can find on YouTube about how to create GPT-3 fine-tuned models. Skip to the end where they test out the model. I have yet to find a single video that shows a fine-tuned model respond correctly. In my experience, Fine-tuning a model doesn't seem to do anything. The responses are terrible. I literally would copy and paste prompts that I gave to my fine-tuned models, and my fine-tuned model would never respond with the completion I gave it. Sometimes it would even tell random stories. Like, it would literally start writing a story when I'm asking it questions about how to write code. One of the reasons this is happening is because fine-tuned models are only allowed to use G GPT-3 base models. These include DaVinci, Curie, Babbage, and Ada. These, by the way, are not chat models. If you go to your playground and you click over here with mode, you'll notice there's different kinds of GPT models. The best model is the chat model. This is what's known as chat GPT. This works really, really well. It has GPT-4, GPT-3.5 Turbo. These are the models that are really, really great. But you you can't use them with your fine-tuned models. You can only use complete models, which compared to ChatGPT is awful. The results are not anywhere close to as good as the ChatGPT models. So that's the first reason why it's terrible. The second reason is because, like I said, the training data I give the fine-tuned models don't seem to have any effect on the responses. The responses just aren't good. I personally have found prompt engineering to be a lot more effective. If there's a situation where you're trying to teach ChatGPT new things that it doesn't already know, in my personal experience, prompt engineering has actually been extremely effective. At the beginning of a conversation, I can teach ChatGPT new information that it doesn't already know. And for the rest of that conversation, ChatGPT will respond correctly using the new information I gave it in the prompt. This is why I personally would stay away from fine-tuned models and focus instead on prompt engineering and using all the new tools that OpenAI is creating to work on top of the ChatGPT models. I wanted to briefly go over some of the major updates that just came out yesterday, June 13th, 2023. Up until this point, if you were a developer working with ChatGPT's API, you faced a few issues. The first issue was with ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo, you were limited to 4,000 tokens with your context in your your conversations. This amounts to around 3,000 words. So your conversation prompts were limited to about 3,000 words. But depending on your budget, you may just have to live with that because of the pricing. With GPT 3.5 Turbo, the pricing was 0.002 cents per 1,000 tokens. This is a lot cheaper than the GPT-4 models. Even though the GPT-4 models allow you to have up to 32,000 tokens, which amounts to about 25,000 words of context, the cost was a lot higher. For the 32,000 context version, it cost 6 cents per 1,000 tokens for the input and 12 cents per 1,000 tokens for the output. If you've personally tried to use this, your daily usage fees have probably been insane. So a lot of developers have been forced to stick with 3.5. Well, to 
today they now have a 16K version of the ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo model. And the pricing is still very reasonable. What this means is you can now have up to about 12,000 words in a prompt for the GPT 3.5 model. So if you're in a situation where you need to train ChatGPT on new information that it doesn't already know, maybe information from the year 2023, since ChatGPT is stuck in 2021, prompt engineering now becomes a viable option. You now have up to 12,000 words of training data you can add into your prompts in a cost-effective way. Another thing that just came out that I think will be revolutionary is function calling. Now with these GPT 3.5 models and GPT-4, you can call functions using ChatGPT. I'll put this link in the description below so you can read about it in more detail, but I'll give a brief overview of how it works using their example. So say you want to get the current weather in your location. In your code, you could define a get current weather function and put the information inside of it and what you want it to return. So this is the function. Now someone can ask, what's the weather like in Boston? In your create command, you now have the ability to add in a function or multiple functions, and you can set function call auto to tell chat GPT to automatically run functions if it thinks it would be necessary to respond accurately to the user's question. After that chat completion function is run, step two is you get the message object and you check if the model wants to call a function. If it's true that ChatGPT thinks it should call the function you created, it will then proceed to call the get current weather function you created up here. It will get that function response and then it will run this chat completion again. And this time it will also contain the function response in the content. Finally, it will print the run conversation function where it will end up running the function and returning that function response. If you're a developer, instead of wasting your time without out of date fine tuned models, I would focus all my time on getting good at prompt engineering and learning how to use all these tools currently being built on top of the chat GPT models. I really think that's the most effective way to use and improve chat GPT in your current situation at your company. If you're interested in prompt engineering, a tool that has become vital to me is nextchat.ai. Nextchat.ai works just like ChatGPT, but it has a prompt library. If you go to nextchat.ai to sign up, you'll notice after you log in, on the right side, there is a prompt library. Over here is where you can teach ChatGPT new information and then use those prompts, that new training data in your conversations. For example, I created a Next.js API route handlers prompt where I taught Nextchat how the new API route handlers work. I can just paste that new training data into this conversation. And now if I ask it something like create an example git endpoint using API route handlers, it automatically knows how to do it. Even though ChatGPT is stuck in the year 2021, I was able to use prompts to teach it new information and it instantly updated responses accordingly. Fine-tuned models will not do this. They are not nearly as good as the ChatGPT model. Models. And if you use next chat, and you find a prompt isn't working very well, you can always click the prompt and update it, test again, update it, test again, until it's responding the way you want it. And then your prompts are all saved to your account on the right side of your screen. Let me know in the comments below, have you tried to create a fine-tuned GPT model? Did it respond the way you expected it to? Were you actually able to get it to work or did it not work very well? Please let us know in the comments below. If you do happen to know of a video that teaches how to create fine-tuned models where the model responds the way you expect it to, please post a link in the comments below. Like the video if you'd like to see more content like this. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.